The following program is presented by the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Please join the Most Reverend Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice in Florida, for the annual Catholic Memorial Mass. It will be at 3 p.m. on Thursday, November 11th at Patriot Plaza and is held in recognition of and to honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve and defend our country. Patriot Plaza is located at Sarasota National Cemetery, five miles east of I-75 and exit 205. All are invited to attend and veterans and active military are encouraged to wear their uniforms. For more information, contact Gail Artie at the Diocese of Venice at 941-484-9543 or email arty at dioceseofvenice.org. The Diocese of Venice in Florida presents The Mass. The TV Mass comes to you from Incarnation Parish in Sarasota, Florida. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish to welcome in a special way all of our homebound for this 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time and all of our Incarnation students joining us this morning. So let us all take a moment and call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, fear the Lord your God and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you and thus have a long life. Hear then Israel and be careful to observe them that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. <clears throat> the scribe said to him, well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one, and there is no other than he and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. It is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I welcome each and every one of you here this particular Sunday morning, especially to all of our homebound viewers 
and all those who aren't able to make it to the church today. In a special way today, this being October 31st, is the 31st Sunday also in ordinary time. <clears throat> and we have an interesting question put to our blessed Lord and Savior by one of the scribes in the gospel today. And it's very interesting. What is the first commandment? He really wanted to know what is the most probably important of all the commandments. If you look back into the Jewish history, the Jewish people in the first five books of the Old Testament had 613 commands. And also, you know, we as Christians have the Ten Commandments, but they really wanted to know what was the most important, what was the first. <clears throat> and Christ goes back to the Old Testament, and he goes back to uh, Deuteronomy and Leviticus and pulls out these two particular answers of loving God first and then loving our neighbor. When you look at the Ten Commandments, we see that there was a person years ago used to tell us, I think it was a teacher, said, you know, if you look at the cross, the cross has a horizontal beam and a vertical beam. And the vertical beam could be pointing up to God. So the first three commandments always deal with our relationship with God, pointing up. And then the last seven commandments deal with the horizontal beam of our relationship with one another. And I think it puts it in such great perspective that really that's what Jesus Christ answered, is our relationship with God and our relationship with another. And we are always in search of the truth. We're always searching for what does that mean? I've been reading a particular book on the, um, <clears throat> one of the master generals of the Dominican order, um, Father uh, Ratcliffe, he's retired now, but he was one in saying that, you know, he joined the Dominicans to search for the truth, and that's what we all are doing. We're all in our lives are gonna search for the truth the truth of who God is, where he is, what he is, what he wants us to do with our lives, and then how we treat one another flows from that. As so many preachers have said over the years, you know, you can't love God and not love your neighbor. It's, it just flows from it. So that's the beauty, I think, that we reflect on this particular Sunday is how we treat one another and how we worship, adore, and love our God, Jesus Christ. And what great, great thing it is to have our faith and to have one another here as we come to worship on this particular Sunday. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and we'll make a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we now offer up the following petitions to you. For Pope Francis, Bishop Duane, all bishops and priests, May the Lord fill them with joy in their mission to radiate his love to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with the burden of hatred or racism, may God grant them his loving comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel abandoned or alone, may the Lord be their refuge and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may God continue to lead us in fulfilling the call to holiness we have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we humbly lift up all these petitions through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as with joyful celebration. Amen. And so with all the angels, we praise you as with joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe, from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. i 
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Have a peaceful day. Thank you, Father. Oh God, beyond all praising, we worship you. Thank you for watching TV Mass. The TV Mass is made possible because of contributions from viewers like you. To make a contribution to TV Mass, please send your check to the Diocese of Venice, care of TV Mass, 1000 Pinebrook Road, Venice, Florida, 34285. And you can view this Mass anytime you like on the Diocese of Venice website. Visit dioceseofvenice.org and click on the Televised Mass button. Please join the Most Reverend Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice in Florida, for the annual Catholic Memorial Mass. It will be at 3 p.m. on Thursday, November 11th at Patriot Plaza and is held in recognition of and to honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve and defend our country. Patriot Plaza is located at Sarasota National Cemetery, five miles east of I-75 and exit 205. All are invited to attend, and veterans and active military are encouraged to wear their uniforms. For more information, contact Gail Arty at the Diocese of Venice at 941-484-9543 or email arty at dioceseofvenice.org.